Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, if you've been watching my YouTube channel lately, you know that I've been making some videos uh, discussing the book of James. So the first thing I want to ask you to do uh, is um, you can go to my channel and look up the video that I made called James Exposed. It's a two-hour discussion on the book of James. And I think in this discussion, we're able to prove that the book of James is a false message. And it is not the message for our salvation. Now, I know personally, I, I've spent many years trying to defend the, the message in James. I've, I've done contortions. I've twisted like a pretzel trying to answer all the verses in James that are presenting this false message. But now I've come to the understanding that uh, instead of trying to make these verses in James work, uh, it's like fitting a square peg into a round hole. They cannot work because it's a, it's a heretical message. Now, how did this happen? Uh, in the beginnings of the Christian church, this message of salvation was faith in Jesus as your Savior and you get eternal life. But the first believers were all Jews. And then this message was offered to the Gentiles. But during the early church, the Jewish believers were not willing to give up their Judaism. And they were trying to make... Uh, it a requirement that you not only had to believe in Jesus, but you had to also follow Judaism. So there was a fight in the early church over is Judaism required or is simply faith in Jesus required? So this is a battle that took place in the beginnings of the church and we can clearly see this argument, this fight going on when you read the writings of the Apostle Paul and the writings of James. Uh, Brother Mitchell Belenkoff has made some videos on this also, and I put his video along with mine into a playlist called Shocking Facts About the Book of James. So please watch those for a more in-depth study on this. But what I want to do right now is I want to attempt to uh, kind of reenact what I think was happening at that time. Now I apologize for my bad acting, but I'm going to try to play the part of James and Paul as though they're having this discussion or this argument over this doctrine. Now, I, I would also compare this to what we see happening today uh, in our everyday life, uh, in the, the church today, and also uh, all over YouTube. I know that many times I've had someone send me a comment on my video attacking the the doctrine of faith alone and they send me a message and, and then well, I send them a message back and we go back and forth posting our messages arguing for both sides. I argue for salvation through faith alone and then they argue that faith alone is not enough. Works are also required. So this argument started right at the beginning of the church and it's still going on today. So uh, if uh, if they had uh, the internet and uh, text messaging at that time, I think the Apostle Paul and James would have been sending their messages back and forth. So let me now present it as though that's what they were doing in this argument. <clears throat> I'm going to put this hat on when I'm speaking for Paul because Paul believed in Jesus Christ for his salvation. When I take the hat off, I'll be speaking for James because James put his faith in himself. He put it his faith, faith in his own ability to follow works. So let me try that right now. First I'll speak for James. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and hath not works, can faith save him?
He saved us not because of righteous things we have done, but because of his mercy. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. It is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. We conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. By works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Now when a man works, his wages are not credited to him as a gift, but as an obligation. To him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? A man is not justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Christ Jesus. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son up upon the altar? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. By the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified. Do not nullify the grace of God. For if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died needlessly. If by grace then it is not by works. If it were, grace would no longer be grace. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Well, there you have it. You have the words of Paul, you have the words of James compared point by point, arguing back and forth for salvation. James argued for works. Paul argued for faith alone. And when Paul says, if an angel from heaven, if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel, they're to be cursed. And that includes James. James preached another gospel which is not the true message of salvation. So, the true message of salvation, if you don't know what it is, the Apostle Paul was asked, what must I do to be saved? And he answered, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Believe. Believe in Jesus. Believe that Jesus has the ability to give you eternal life. Believe that Jesus is faithful and he does give eternal life to everyone who trusts him for it. You see, our works is not the issue. 
how good we are or our sin. Jesus died for our sins. Sin is not the obstacle between man and God anymore. Jesus paid the full penalty for our sins. Thank you, Jesus. And he raised himself from the dead, proving that he does have the power over life and death. And now we know that we can trust him. We are justified in believing in Jesus. He proved his power by raising himself from the dead. So rest easy. Put your faith in Jesus. He's worthy of our faith. I hope this is helpful to you. For those of you who have been struggling with the book of James in the past, I hope now you understand what was going on. James was the one Paul argued against who was preaching this false message. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God. His name is Jesus Christ.